performance coach, but I'm also an artist. If you don't know, there's paintings all over my room. I, I paint, I, I do this type of stuff, I create. And I love the question of what makes an artist. And also I love, you know, following your dreams and and the regret that kick that could kick in from not following your dreams. And that's what we're talking about in this episode today. It's with Dave Smith, Joe Rogan, JRE, 1977 is the episode number, and we are at two hours, 52 minutes, and one seconds. But we gotta get to our sponsor, guys. You know who the sponsor is. It's Coach Colin himself, sponsoring himself. Every hoodie that you buy, this is the anti-WEF hoodie, every hoodie or shirt or mug or t-shirt that you buy helps us tremendously, helps us fight against demonetization, against our revenue being limited for no apparent reason, and we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. And to anyone who has gone ahead and bought something off of this site so far, Thank you so much. You have no idea how much it means to us. And for those of you who listen to the end, I will be dropping a code that you can enter into the website so you can receive 10% off. And also, if you're in the U.S., a code for you to get free shipping. Let's get into it right here. You know, like they're, they're, the, they're the minority. And then there were tons of awful teachers, just tons. And Here's the question, man. Like, what creates an artist? Like, w w most people, if they had artistic talent in some way, shape, or form, they'd probably want to do that because it's a fun thing to do. There's something exciting about creating things. But where does that come from? Is that in all of us, but it's just discouraged so hard in some people and through this sort of rigid adherence to whatever is in control? Whatever, whatever power structure, whatever authority figure, is that does that squash it in so many people that only a few of tortured childhoods get out? And maybe we associate creativity and we associate brilliant art with with people with tortured childhoods yeah. for all the wrong reasons. Do you ever hear uh, that? I've always loved this quote so much, but someone asked uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Or they were like, when you were a kid, were you like the funny one in your group of friends? And he went, we were all funny. And then everyone else got jobs. Wow. You know? And it's kind of yeah. like, that. Is, like there is something mm. to that, man. Like, what do you mean? We were all hilarious. Yeah. I just kept being hilarious. Yeah. They all decided to stop at some point. Yeah. I'm like, I, do, I don't think everyone it, like, could be an artist. There are some people who are wired for like different things. There are some people who are like, like this dude's a chemist or this dude's like a computer yes. programmer and he was made to be that yes. like he's, he had like a real propensity toward that but i think there's no question a lot of people have that squashed a lot of people yeah. like you know yeah. I've, I've known people like that who are those like, are the most bitter yeah. people they're the most bitter people what's well, sad there's something tragic about that you know, the guys that wanted to be in a band but it just didn't work out or just didn't it didn't have the balls to like go yeah. for it and then got a job and then had a family well now you got a family you can't leave this job now you know what i mean yeah. like you got and yeah that's there's something so tragic about that man it's weird you know it's a it's a sad person to be around someone who just it didn't they didn't chase their dream or they didn't have the encouragement or the they didn't have the um, confidence they didn't have the circumstances they had bad circumstances that befell them yeah well, if you're if you're like young and you're you're listening to this, like keep that in mind. I remember I remember Jordan Peterson said once. I think it might have been on on with you. I can't. Remember, maybe it wasn't. But I, he said something about like you know there's people who are like in a job that they hate or in a career that they hate, and they'll think about like well I can't like I can't leave and pursue something else because what about all the risks of doing that? Yeah. And you're like yeah. What about the risks of not? Yeah. What about the risks of doing something that makes you miserable for the rest of your life? Yeah. Because that seems like a a risk worth considering, you know? I was really lucky in having no stability when I was young, which doesn't make sense if you think about it because you want to provide your children with as much stability as possible. But I was really lucky that I didn't because I didn't believe in, like, normal systems. Like, I didn't believe in them. I'd never... That, they, they seemed alien to me. Like, the idea of getting a job in an office was, like, so crazy, I never even considered it. I've never had an office job ever. Even when I had other jobs, I took these weird alternative jobs. Like I did construction or I drove limos. I did stuff that like anybody could do. Like you didn't need, there's no barrier to entry. Like it was, 
working in an office to me seemed like madness. Like just and that is why I can't go too long. Copyright restrictions, you know. But again, episode 1977, Dave Smith. We're talking about two minutes and 55 seconds. You can hear that whole talk. They only go on for about another three minutes, but it is impactful stuff. And the one thing I want to say about what Dave Smith said, if you're young and you're thinking about following your dream, I say, fuck that. If you're old and you want to follow your dream, do that shit. Do not not pursue it because you're old because you're older i've heard of people i don't even have to say i've heard of people my own mom was like i think she was in her 50s and she had just got fired and she's like i remember we were in a car and she's like colin i'm not going back to work. i'm not working like that again she's like i'm starting this business if you know anybody that needs any cleaning done tell me i'm not going back to that i remember we were driving I remember exactly where we were. We were like two intersections away from where we live. I remember exactly where we were. And I was like, okay. And it was the third time she had tried this business. And I was like, all right, let's see what happens. And she made it happen. Day after day after day, she went to the rich part of town where we live. And she started cleaning big houses. And she kept doing that. She kept doing that. And the people loved her. And she kept doing that. She kept doing that. And then it was a salon. And then it was a salon. And then it was a nail place. And then it was this. And then it was that. And then it was 10, 12 hours of work every day that she had. And she just kept on going. You can do it. You know, that was her thing. Her dream wasn't, you know, exactly cleaning, but it was independence. She was like, I don't want somebody to walk in to an office where I work and tell me that I'm fired. And all of a sudden, I don't know what I'm going to do. She wanted that independence and she got it. And if that's what you want, you can have it. If you want, if you want more, if you want to start a business, if you want to become an artist, you want to become a painter, anything. I talk about this all the time. And I know this is away from like the news and stuff, but this shit is just as important, if not more, because it has to do with you and your life. And you and your life are more important than everything that's going on around you. Believe me. A stronger mind, a stronger you can change your whole community. And I know that sounds odd, but the ripple effects of who you can become and who you're supposed to become are just invaluable, unmeasurable. You have no idea how much you can impact. So if you have that dream, that, that thing that you want to do, it does get squashed like they talk about. I know. I know for a fact. I mean... I I have to thank God that I, I literally dropped out of school. I, I got like a grade 10 education and dropped out and started working because I was like, I don't want to do this. I hate this. And I was lucky enough. I was gifted enough that I was so addicted to drugs that I just stayed away from ev what everybody wanted to do. I was so cast out from the normal path of people, of teenagers, that it was just by the time the smoke cleared, literally the smoke cleared, and I finally got clean and everything. I was so far removed from ever getting a regular job that I was just, you know, I speak well. I was still able to get regular jobs, but I even got this tattoo because I was like, I hope I get this tattoo. And when people see it, they refuse to hire me because I knew I wasn't meant for that type of thing. I knew I wasn't meant for that type of path. I like being in front of cameras. I like painting things. I like doing stand up comedy. I like I like I like doing other stuff. I don't I don't like work in factories and stuff. I hate it. And if you hate it too, get out of it. You can. I know it's always all, it's easy for you to say, fuck that, man. Fuck out of here. This is my first camera. This is the first camera I ever had. And I made it happen. And it was hard. And it didn't happen all at once. And it took years. And it takes a lot of learning. And it takes a lot of pain. But you can do it. You can do it. I'm still not there. I'm still not where I think I should be. But I'm in a house. And I have a wife coming home. And we're going to have a kid and, 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 and we're going to be all right. You know what I mean? So it's like if you could have a job that gives you security, but you hate it versus you have a little bit of uncertainty, but you're making it happen, doing something that you're passionate about, take the passion because your passion will always provide for you. It will always provide for you. And it gets scary and it gets dark, but it always ends up providing for you. You just need faith and there's faith in god there's also faith in yourself faith that the thing that you want to do is something that you're meant to do and stepping into it it's it's so doable and it feels so scary and it's always uncertain i'm sure even when you become a millionaire it's still uncertain you're like is all this going to go away like 
but you can do it. Don't don't let any don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. And the second you find somebody who's like that, cut them off. Cut them off. Move towards people who are creating, who are doing it, because they'll think in their head, of course you can do it. I do it. Like if you hung around me and you wanted to start a business, I'd be like, of course you could start a business. I started a business. I have a coaching business. I have a business I run on YouTube. I have a clothing store. I have all sorts of things. You can start a business. And if all those things start to suffer, I'll do Uber Eats. I will do anything to make sure that I have my independence, that I have my sovereignty, that I have control over my life. Anything. Never get an electric car. Always going to be staying with gas, even if they make gas illegal. Never going with everything digitalized. Always going to be doing cash wherever I can. Never going to self-checkouts. Always standing in line dealing with a human. I, <laughs> It's just the way I'm wired. And if you're wired like that too, go after it. Go after whatever it is that you want in life. Don't, don't, don't not believe in yourself. That's the worst thing you could do. It feels like the worst thing you could do is fail. But that's not true. The worst thing you could do is not believe in yourself. You know, David Goggins talks about going, passing away, dying, and then being before God. And then God, you know, like, and being in the form that he used to be in, 300 pounds, you know, working as a, uh, a pest control guy, you know, killing roaches and stuff. And then he dies and he goes to God and then God's like, okay, here's here's who you are. And it's, he starts saying Navy SEAL, you know, first Navy SEAL, like 30, 36 African-American Navy SEAL in history, uh, you know, ran all these miles, you know, millionaire, you know, speaker, motivator, changing people's lives. And for God to say, this is you, and have him not accomplish any of that. Like that was like his worst fear. And that should be all of our worst fears. It's not, and, and forget God, just not stepping up to our ultimate potential because we all have an ultimate potential. We all have a wild, incredible life that we're supposed to live. So step into it as quickly as you can. Step into it. <sighs> and other than that, I am out.